irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Question Reality Radio Show. I'm Priscilla Leona, producer and host of this show, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. For 13 years, we have been providing our audience with entertainment industry career advice. Now, this show is for you if you are questioning your career reality, um, or if you're already working in the entertainment industry and you just need some tips, advice, or resource information on how to elevate your career status. Now, the guests on our show include Emmy Award winners, Grammy Award winners, Tony Award winners. We have reality TV stars and just a wide variety of people working as show business professionals. And that can include film, television, music, and radio producers and directors and casting directors. We have literary agents, casting agents. Agents, PR agents, talent managers, screenwriters, publicists, actors, comedians, singers, novelists, script supervisors. We have stunt people and we throw in an entertainment attorney once in a while because you know you've made it. If you can afford an entertainment attorney, you're like, yes, I have arrived. Get my attorney on the line. I want to see my attorney. I think I've been watching too much Law & Order. Um, If you missed any of our past shows, here are three ways that you can listen to them. Number one, you can listen to all of our shows on the free mobile app, which you can find obviously on the App Store, the Google Play Store. You can listen to us on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Amazon Podcasts, Google, Audible.com, Stitcher.com. You can also listen to any of our shows right on the LA Talk Radio archive page. And that's right directly from the website that you're listening to us from now latalkradio.com uh, you can look for our show title question reality or you can type in my name in the search bar uh, Priscilla Leona <clears throat> and there you go now we kindly ask one little tiny favor of you and that is to please subscribe to our podcast via Apple Podcasts or to subscribe to us and follow us our social media sites so we are on the obs is it obs is that what the kids call it now the obvious sites uh facebook and twitter and instagram uh, all under my name priscilla leona p-r-i-s-c-i-l-l-a-l-e-o-n-a not question reality priscilla leona this all falls under my little tip every week which is branding 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 you have to keep everything consistent if you want people to be able to find you easily people go to google they type priscilla leona they're going to have my radio show they're going to have access to imdb.com which is all of my film producer credits they're going to have access to everyone keep all of your social media consistent name preferred or your business brand so just a little tip ah finally If you want to be booked on our show or refer someone to be a guest to promote themselves, showcase the projects or their products, or just come on and help listeners provide sage career advice, go to our official website. Now, you got to pay attention. This is a totally different website address. Uh, It's our official one, which is questionrealityradioshow.com questionrealityradioshow.com not the website that you're listening to us now which is obviously LA Talk Radio that is where our show airs so uh, this website questionrealityradioshow.com uh, I can't even talk. QuestionRealityRadioShow.com. That is where you can go and see our annual guest schedule. Uh, you might want to go there and take a peek at who our upcoming guests are. Check out their sites, and then you can also submit to be booked on our show by clicking the contact link. It's really easy. We just need your name and your email, uh, and your title and your website. And 
you will be submitted for consideration. All right, we are done with that. Now to the exciting part. I have been trying to get this lady on my show and for some reason it wasn't working out there. I got sick and then there were scheduling conflicts and then I had to film this and then I have to film that. And then finally oh, a date worked, which is today. And I cannot be happier. Oh my God, this woman on my show today, Pamela Hopkins is so beautiful. My husband said, Oh, can you send me that picture i'm like no you will not be getting his pic her picture for your perversion in that room no <laughs> no he just thinks she's so beautiful as she is um you want to go to her website now it's pamela hopkins music.com pamela hopkins music.com her social media site you can find her on facebook under well this is an example i was talking about Ooh. Facebook, PDH285, mm, Twitter, P Hopkins Music, mm, Instagram, there you go, perfect, Pamela Hopkins Music, YouTube, Pamela Hopkins, there we go, two out of four ain't bad, as Meatloaf said, well, actually, two out of three, but two out of four, that's great, um, she is, Pamela Hopkins is an award-winning country singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist. She is a Josie Award winner and member of the Recording Academy Grammys. Um, some of her uh, other, well, she is a, she, let me tell you, she is a member of so many professional organizations. I could not even list all of them, but just a couple, as I said, are the Recording Academy Grammys, Arkansas CMA, Josie Music Awards member. And you can go to her website and you can see all of her. I think, oh, also I, it's called ISA or ISA. It's the International Singer Songwriters Association. So you can go to her website and you'll be able to find all of the professional memberships which are so impressive to me and what is more exciting is that we're going to be playing her latest song yes 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 it's called back when and we're going to be playing that around 5 30 and you don't want to miss hearing this song it's fantastic but Get the tissues ready because it's going to cause a little tear to drop from the corner of your eye. Oh, it's it's lovely, though. It really is. Um, now, Pamela, had, very exciting for me. I have so many questions. I think half of the questions I came up with was about her uh, going to Cuba. She's just returned from Cuba where she was performing for our troops. How wonderful is that, right? Ah! I always wanted to perform for the troops, but more in the capacity of Bob Hope than a singer. You know, I can't sing in tune. I've been telling you that for 13 years, but I can, I can do a joke. Yeah. Now, Pamela is super excited uh, to be talking with us today about her uh, latest, I think, album. Now, I'm going to have to have her tell me because the, I'm not sure if it's an album we're going to be promoting today, but definitely the featured single uh, back when, which again, plug, 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 5.30, we're going to be playing it just minutes, minutes, minutes away. Um, so we're going to let her tell you. And then after we play the song around 5.30, when we come back, very, very great news for people who are pursuing a career in music uh, because she's going to be providing some really great career advice questions, such as how important is it for an aspiring country music artist to be based in Nashville? We get that question so much. Um, we also get the question, is Nashville the best city to promote the genre of country music? Um, people want to know what are some of the do's and don'ts when pursuing a career as a country music artist? Um, um, I, another good one is uh, is the approach of writing country lyrics drastically different than writing lyrics for other music genres. So many people, and I tell you, it is just so funny. You know, I'm in the uh, entertainment industry, so acting, music, it, com comedy, and I have lots of comedian friends that say, oh, who, who do you have for a guest? And I'll say this person who's a country music artist, and then they'll say like, oh, 
so there's going to be a dog involved or a baseball bat or Jesus. And I'm like, well, you know, that is not right because they write beautiful, beautiful songs. But every genre kind of gets kind of stereotype for certain types of music and i get a lot of questions about that with with country music is 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 there a different approach so i'm really interested in finding out what pamela says about that if there's a different approach to writing lyrics for that um and then also we're going to get her advice on how to conquer stage fright so she's going to be answering some very important questions for the audience uh so you got to stay tuned. So without further ado, let's get talking to the gorgeous, hot, sexy, blonde bombshell that is Pamela Hopkins. Welcome, Pamela Hopkins. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I love that intro. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Oh, my God. You are so beautiful to look upon you. I think I need to put a tissue between my eyes and the picture. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I, yes. I heard your your intro was it was so great. I was like, I don't think I've ever had an intro coming into an interview like that. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank but you. I did, because of you. Yeah, That's yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, um, I did want to clear something up though, because I think that you have my personal Facebook on there. Because my my um my music Facebook is Pamela Hopkins Music. The PDH two eighty five is my personal one. <laughs> See that? This is what happens when we don't get the yeah. right information. Bad Michael Stover. Bad Michael Stover. <laughs> well, and I don't. Well, he's he's on both of mine, so he probably just stuck the wrong one in there. But I mean, people Let's send me that. requests to both. But you know, the one is my music. So I I, I started um, matching all my branding because you were talking about branding. I heard you say um, how important it is to brand. Um, and I started doing all of my my branding probably about a year and a half ago to make sure that it was consistent. Oh, and that was the last piece, except the Twitter one. I can't figure out how to change it. You can't change it. I tried to one time. No, right. you have to make a whole new account. And then yeah, that's so I, think I had that account and something was messed up with it. And so I went to Pete Hopkins music and I was like, well, I want the other one back, but something happened, but I don't get on Twitter a whole lot. So if you send me a message there, I'll probably never see it. I know. It's, uh, well, it's good that you have it, you know, as long as you have it, and this is a tip for the audience, on your website, if you have not been consistently branding yourself with the same title, then what you can do is when you, on your website, you got to have your social media, the little icons, yes. and then as I long as you <laughs> click those, right, they'll go to the appropriate yep. page. So, you know, Correct. that's how you but let me get that real quick. What is your professional Facebook? Because uh, I got to, yeah. What's your professional? It's the same, same as my website. It's Pamela Hopkins Music. Okay. Pamela yeah, Hopkins. Same as my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put that down. So on Facebook, make sure, uh, because we do ask that you please go to her site and give her a little thumb and a follow. So at Facebook, please. it's Pamela yeah. Hopkins Music. On right. Twitter, we don't really use Twitter either, but you know, that's P. P. Hopkins like, Music. P. Hopkins <laughs> Music. Instagram, Pamela Hopkins Music. And YouTube at Pamela Hopkins, right? Pamela yeah. Hopkins. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. If you just put Pamela Hopkins and or you know, it'll pop up. It'll pop up. All right. So, la oh my God. So, Pamela, you just returned from Cuba. Omg. I did. You know, I had a girlfriend who performed at Guantanamo Bay, uh, in Cuba for the troops too. So, is that where you were? Tell us all about it. Yeah, so that, that is where I was. Um, we do. So, my full time job as as a musician, besides my um, career with my band and doing my original music is that I'm a dueling piano player. And so I have a connection and she books us. Like I've done a three week tour in Europe right before COVID. And this one came up and she asked me this summer, she's like, Hey, do you want to perform in Guantanamo Bay? I said, absolutely. And so, you know, no questions asked. Yes, I'll be there. Wow. Um, and wow. so, yeah, I flew out and I was actually the the team leader, kind of like the, the tour manager while we were there because they, you know, they're still, they're still kind of on lockdown in, in a sense that, you know, you have to get COVID tested before you go. Then when you get there, you're on lockdown for like 24 hours because they have to COVID test you again, right? You know, right when you get there. And they're really proud to tell you that they have zero cases. They catch them all coming into the base. They're like, we catch them. And then now, so if you get 
pop positive for COVID when you get there, you're there 14 days, even if your tour was a week. They're not sending you home. <laughs> you gotta wait. Oh, well, do they at least house you and give you food? Or they're like, yeah, hey. they, so we were, no, we were served food. They brought us, um, they took us from the, the military airport to the Navy, um, I said NGIS, I think it was called. It's the, um, the hotel or whatever. And then they give you a menu and they go, you got to pick your meal. Here you go. And you get two meals. So pick your lunch, pick your dinner and they deliver it downstairs and you walk downstairs and get it. And then, you know, eat in your room. Yeah. And they say, as long as you don't get a phone call, like by 7 a.m. the next morning that you're good to go. And yeah, you know, they still require masks on on in, inside the buildings. But other than that, I mean, they're they, you know they're pretty proud of that. And I was like, well, I'm glad everybody's safe. You know, you got to be vaccinated and did um, you all of did that. Did you perform with a band? Did you take a band with you, or or were there like military musicians already there, and you just uh, no we no we did a mili- we did a uh, a dueling piano show. So it was uh, me and two other dueling piano players. Oh, so that you we brought cover- with you. That you brought yes. with you. That you're, okay. There's three of us, yeah. And so one of us will play drums while the other two play the, the keyboards and get everybody clapping and singing along. It's kind of like a clap along, sing along show. But we were the first musicians to come back over since COVID. So we were the, the first people they've seen in a year and a half, pretty much, you know, wow. perform for them. So, so um, when you finally got to the point, because I imagine they had a lot of rehearsals. I don't know, but they at least let you rehearse, right? So when you finally no. got to the point, <laughs> no. what? what do you mean? Yeah. So when you no, finally so... got to the point of actually performing, you know, tell us about, yes. you know, what, what happened. Uh, describe the moments well, of what you were feeling. Well, so the two players that, that I got sent with me, they're both out of Houston, um, which is a uh, Joy Keeling and uh, Stephen Bacon there. We all kind of, we're all very familiar with, with dueling pianos because that's what we do for a living. So you can be put with any players. We all kind of have sort of similar set lists. And then some of us do, you know, different things that are like, you know, Stephen, for instance, you know, he probably knows more 80s songs and Joy is going to know more popular music that's popular. Now I'm going to know more country, you know, cause that's where our, our actual, um, I guess where our, favorites lie is in those genres so you end up going over there I met them for the first time in um, Norfolk Virginia right before we flew out to Guantanamo Bay we do a sound check that next day or two days later I guess because you know we're in quarantine basically for 24 hours Um, we went and did a a sound check and there's not a a dueling piano show is not like a pre-written show it's very off the cuff it's very request driven and so everybody shows up the troops and their families and they come and they write their requests of songs they want to hear down and they bring them up to the stage and we get them and then we just knock them out and play them. Wow. Right the what do you, what so, do you do if you have, if you don't know a particular song, do you just pick another one or do you acknowledge that? Oh yeah. There was, there were so many requests. We probably had, you know, we were, we did a two hour show and I want to say we probably had no less than a hundred requests sitting there. You can't fit a hundred songs in two hours. So yeah, you just, you pick the ones, you know, and you basically figure out during that song, um, how can I get the the audience engaged? So if we do say like proud Mary, then we may pick people that we see out in the audience that are dancing to come forward to the stage and dance in front of everybody and get everybody out there dancing. Um, you know, I do, I do a song and this is the second day that we had performed. Um, and some of the, we did a school visit Uh, because they have us doing other things while we're there so we did you know a jam session at the rec center with you know in the music room with other soldiers that come in there to or seamen come in there to um, learn you know whatever instruments they're learning or they just go in there to jam and they've got music you know instruments set up and we went in there and kind of jammed with them and then we did a school visit so we went and talked to students from the age of about probably five to sixth grade and talked to them about our music career and um, showed them a little bit of stuff on the piano and they got up and sang and you know as we played and just had a good time with the kids well some of those kids came to our show that night so I had them leading some of the dancing around with the adults which is really fun oh you know it's, it's a lot yeah. of clap along a lot of sing along popular music is what we do at a dueling piano show oh so my, it's I a just, good time I've been to one dueling piano and of course I'm in LA and there's a universal city walk and they have a they had I don't know if it's still there with 
COVID, but they used to do a dueling panel show. It is the most fun thing ever. Right. And um, I'm an so 80s that's what girl. I do. Uh, so yeah. I was always requesting, oh, yeah, you know, hey, Mickey, you're so fine. And they're like, that doesn't really work with piano. I'm like, darn. But uh, yeah, so I know that it is a lot of fun to do those dueling piano shows. Now, did they have uh, other acts there, such as comedians or anything, or was it all music? Because, you know, Bob um, Hope used to go and perform comedy for the troops. Right. So it was just us this time. So we were, like I said, the first ones kind of out of the gate um, coming back over there. So, you know, we, like we were booked. And so they, the military is given like a budget for entertainment once they're overseas. And so they hire that stuff out and they have to schedule it kind of, a, you know, accordingly. We generally know uh, six to eight weeks out if we're going or not, you know, like, hey, can you do this? And that's when the person starts finding do they you know, do players this? or whatever. Do they do this? uh on a regular basis, like weekly or monthly at Guantanamo for the troops? I would assume it's probably quarterly. I don't think they would fly entertainers in. Uh, I, of course, I don't know that for sure, but mm -hmm. um, my my general consensus would be that because of the money it costs to fly us over and to pay us and to house us and to feed us, and some of the bases don't feed us. You know, they we have to feed ourselves. You know, it's more like this is on you. Um, but the, the housing is always covered. The flight's always covered. And, you know, then we're paid to go over there as well. Um, and so, and just like I said, the experience, they could almost pay. I know uh, one of the guys that went over there with me, which was Steve, and he was like, you could literally pay me nothing. I still would come. You know, just pay, <laughs> so, pay my so, flight. Pay my flight. So I assume be you're, you would go back if you were ever asked, right? That sounds yes, like yes, fun, yes, yes. I would think. Did you have a chance to, to, to do a tour around and see Cuba at all and do anything else? Well, or did you have to stay on the base? You have to stay on the base. There's a, a wall. <laughs> Apparently, they don't let you. Ah, fly. got uh, it. There's, yeah, there's like a yeah. It's pretty locked down. But we did get to go. You know, we got to go snorkeling. They took us uh, out into the you know the bay a little bit. And we went snorkeling and um, unfortunately saw no fish, which was kind of weird to me because I I love to snorkel and I love the Caribbean and I was like, where are the fish? Oh like God, it was almost scary. Did the like, fish no go? Fish. Wow, that's <laughs> interesting. No fish. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, well, we still got to get out in the sun and have some fun in the, you know, the water. So that was, well, cool. it was, it was am, a good trip. I'm so happy for you. And I'm so proud of you because that is, uh, that is an honor. So I'm so proud that we got to have you represent us in Cuba. Uh, I'm sure some Cubans got to hear you and they go, wow, that Pamela, that Pamela Hopkins. <laughs> So I hear that you have a, now you have to, as I said earlier, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was a new album, but I don't know if it's a new single. I know that you had said that you released six new songs or you were going to release six new songs throughout the year 2021. So I wasn't sure. Um, and I also wanted to clarify, uh, you said that you had co-wrote each song with various Nashville writers so uh is it an album you're here to promote today or is it just a single or so my, my newest back single, when. It's, it's yeah so back when is a single um okay. so the way that the producers that I work with out of Nashville or out of Franklin Tennessee which is right outside of Nashville um especially being independent artists their strategy is to constantly having music come out so I released four songs last year. I had planned to release six songs this year, and I'm on number, back when was number four, no, number three. I got to back up my date, two, three, three. So my fourth one is coming out next month. It's called One More Last Kiss, and I'm going to take all four I did last year and the four I've done so far this year, and we'll press an album that will come out. It will, we'll will re-release as an album in December. Now, that's so, big done um is this a new way of artists doing things like i would say within the at least the 13 years that i've been doing the show i hear that instead of people putting all their songs together and doing an album they're releasing single one year single next year is that the new way i'm not saying new new as in like recently but within the last decade or so is that how things are being done instead of it, you know doing a whole it, album Right. It, it seems at least for, you know, it's like I said, it's a good strategy. I think that is, is working 
um, for independent artists. I'm not sure about, like I said, artists that are on labels, how they do it, except, you know, they'll, they kind of pre-release a couple of songs from an album and then release the rest of the album. I've seen that being done. But um, like I said, the strategy is just kind of keep your name fresh because, you know, once you release an album um, and you do it all at one time, that's it until you can get back in the studio. And it's not cheap, you know. Yeah. So doing all of your songs, like I did, like I said, I did four last year that I recorded in May and then I recorded six more in October. And it's strategizing the release of, you know, what you're doing for the time of the year or the holiday it's around. For instance, when I released um, Little Things, it was the week before Valentine's Day. Like I had specifically scheduled it for that week so that it, because it's a good love song. So, and I thought, well, this would be a great love song. I'll strategically release it the week before Valentine's Day to kind of get it out there. And it went, you know, number one on an independent chart in Australia that next week on Valentine's Day. So I am so you know, was, glad you brought that up, girl. I saw that video with that guy, Matt Dame, who, by the way, is a hot little sexy thing. It, I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. But I swear to God, that was the one of the best videos that I've seen. And I said, you know, I have friends that work for MTV, and they tell me how much these videos cost. And I'm like, you're crazy. Because I see something that you and Matt did and I don't know how much you paid for it, but I tell you that that video could rival any of the MT videos. Well, they don't even make them any hardly anymore, but, you know, right. quality. <laughs> let's just say MTV quality. But you know what I mean? It, I mean, you with today's technology, Pamela, there is no excuse for you to not be able to, when you do your song, to be able to do a video. And it's so important that you 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 do a song with a video, I think, because people like a visual. It's great to hear the yes. song, but it's better, right, to hear a video. So when I saw you and Matt doing that song, I swear it was just wonderful. I loved it. And again, you, you your, your phrasing, your vocal phrasing is so tender that you evoke, and I don't know if that's a compliment to you, but you really can evoke <laughs> sadness and tears out of me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you have such a delicate, sensitive phrasing, you know, the way you end a word and the way you transition lyrically and melodically into your next line. I think it's very beautiful. That's why I told Michael, I have to have Pamela on my show. And I, I said, I just think she is a, she's, she is my Carrie Underwood. <laughs> she well, thank is. you. <laughs> no, but you are you're you're a gorgeous woman. You got a beautiful sound. Very very talented. I I I really like you doing duets. I I I I I don't know how many you've done with people, but you just really there's something different. I noticed because I was watching your YouTube videos. I didn't see you with another person. Maybe I didn't go far enough. But I know that when I saw you with doing it with Matt, I noticed that there was something different the way you performed with him. And I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but th that would yeah. lead me to my next question. Is doing a duet with someone uh, something that is preferred more than doing a single or do you like, not you, I guess we'll just talk about you. Do you like doing yeah. duets better or do you, um, like you know, I, I, I'm not really sure. Um, so I, I can kind of tell you how I got into that specific duet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I did the first four songs last year coming into, you know, my plan for the next two years. Um, and I, I kept having this thing go like, okay, you've got to write this song. You've got to write this song. It's called things that you need to find. Like I was having a hard time finding uh, that duet person. And, you know, I used to be a police officer and he used to be a police officer, both of us here in Arkansas. And he moved to Nashville and was doing, um, uh, what do you call it? Studio work. So he was doing people's demos and he was, you know, that's what he did for a living. And he loved it. He's just like, I'm, I'm a studio rat. I'm good with that. And we had some friends in common and they were like, okay, like, do you know who Matt Dame is? I was like, I don't have a clue who he is. 
Like, who is he? They're like, well, he used to be a Cersei officer. I'm like, yeah, I don't think we our paths have never crossed. And me being a music, they're like, man, he's awesome. You got to get with him and you've got to, you need to, to do, y'all need to do something together. And so I contacted him via Facebook and I said, hey, like a couple of guys that know you said, I need to contact you. And would you be interested in writing a song with me? I've got this love song in my head. Um, called Little Things, and I've got the girl side of it, but I need the guy side of it. Would you mind helping me finish write this? And he's like, yeah. Um, he was going through some some personal things at the time and moving, and he said, uh, let's let's set a date. And we set a date and went through a Zoom call. It was him and I, and then um, or him and me. And he said, do you mind if I bring in Trapton Harvey, which is a buddy of his? He said he's a great lyricist. So where we get stuck, he'll be able to help us. And I was like, that sounds great to me. In about two hours, we had that song done. And when wow. I went to Nashville last October, he met me at the studio, and we did our photo shoot together. And um, uh, that's the first time I'd ever met him in person. And um, and I, I'm going I'm to back up and, and blow your mind real quick, okay? <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's the first time I met him in person. We did our pictures together, and... I was releasing the song and I, te- you know, emailed him or texted him actually. And I said, Hey Matt, this is probably January. I said, we got to schedule um, the video shoot. Um, we'll come to you. And we had this idea of us being in the studio together and just singing to each other in the studio as the video. And he said, I'm not interested in being in a video. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't want any part of that. So the person you're seeing in the video is my husband. What? So, yeah, that's my husband. Yeah, they kind of look similar, but yeah, that's my husband. <laughs> Your husband is lip syncing Matt Dame's part? Or yes, he's and then all... No, he is not singing. <laughs> he is lip syncing. But yeah, he's singing it. And then all of those people that you see in the video are my really good friends that live in my neighborhood and people yeah. that I know from the club. I, yeah. obviously. I don't know you. I've never talked to you before. I knew nothing about your personal life, but I saw something with you and who I thought was Matt Dame. I saw a connection there. I said, my God, this is a really deep connection. And I (laughs) did not know. And it turns out it's your husband. See that? That came through in the video. So I thought I was like, I'm going to blow her mind real quick. That was my <laughs> I, was, I was actually thinking, well, if they weren't in a relationship before, based on that video, they're in a relationship now. And see, it turns out it's your husband. So, yes, you are in yeah. a relationship. <laughs> wow, yeah, that is we've been, <laughs> Yeah, we've been married for uh, almost 20, 24 years. <laughs> He's oh, sitting here beside gosh, me. 24, 24 years, yeah. Years. Wow, that's a great scoop. So I love scoops. I like getting the behind the scenes scoops on things. Well, you know what? We got to play your song because it's already 534. I want to get some questions out of you. Uh, real quick, what we're going to play your song back when, which is, uh, can you give us just a little brief backstory? What's it about? What's the song about? It is completely about my childhood that I feel like a lot of people can connect with. Um, just things that were kind of nostalgic back, you know, in the day. And I had, I had a troubled childhood, you know, as far as like with my, my family. But the things that I have fond memories about are, you know, in that song. So just, you know, staying out late and and coming in when the streetlights come in, came on. You know, so different than today. Technology oh. wasn't a thing back then. And you know, hanging out with my friends in high school, we had such a blast and me just being able to go back and say, you know, these are things that, that come up in my memory that I think, you know, people my age, I'm a little older than, you know, your average uh, singer and songwriter. And um, I think people just, you know, can kind of connect to, it's fun. It kind of takes you back to like, I remember those days and they're very fond memories, you know, and that's, that's kind of what the song is about. And it was just a lighthearted, I do a lot of things with attitude and I wanted to kind of soften it up a little bit. And this is one of my softer, more fun songs. So, I'm glad that you yeah. said that because I remember uh, my husband and I often talk about what happened to the days when we would get on our bikes after school, go to our friend's house. We didn't need to text or call. We just knocked on the door and we just went out and played. And then when the street lights came on, we went in and had dinner and that was it. And things were right. so simple, you know, and we often, so often 
reminisce about. Uh, it is so different today. And, and I, we're kind of lucky that we grew up in that time period. I feel that I we're lucky. Too. I would not want to be a child during the times right now. But anyway, yeah. let's hear the song Back When. So let's play Black, Black When. Back When by Pamela Hopkins. Things were so much simpler back then It was bicycle swing sets and playing with friends Didn't come home to the street lights came on Then it was supper time, PJs and cartoons at dawn Oh, sitting here thinking about the past Wish those days hadn't gone so fast Catching fireflies in a mason jar We were cooling off and sipping from that hose Where time flew, nobody knows Oh, I didn't know how good it was back then But it was back when on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, everywhere, all oh, the digital great. platforms. All oh, right. Find so now the audience, you know that song did something to you. It is catchy and it is, I felt like putting on my stilettos, Pamela, and getting up dancing. So this <laughs> is a song that I'm going to give my girl Pamela a dollar twenty-nine. Come on, that is less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So go to iTunes and get that song now. Back when I love it, I'm gonna give you. You can be get. You'll be getting my dollar twenty nine as soon as this show's over. <laughs> well, that guy was gonna say, and and my song won't put a pound on you for what you order at Starbucks for five bucks. Oh my god. <laughs> Real quick, girl, let me 
to I want to get some of those career advice questions in there, or else I'll be getting emails from people. All right, so uh, let's do the little tips from you. So uh, I know you said you weren't based in Nashville; you're right outside. So with technology available today, as we said, personally, I don't think it's necessary to live in Nashville. But you're the expert. Can you tell us your personal opinion of how important you think it is for an aspiring country music art, music artist to be based in Nashville? If not, what can a person do to get their career started on the right track for success? So um, I'm obviously, like I said, not based in Nashville, but I am, you know, just right outside. So I can make frequent trips if need be. I think, you know, I think personally, if I could move there just for even a little while, just so I can make those connections and have time even if it was just you know, like a month or two or whatever, and be able to go to writer's rounds and, you know, making those connections to where um, I have people to write with. I was lucky enough that uh, on Facebook, which I, I'm going to contradict myself, I guess here, you should move there. Maybe you shouldn't move there. I don't know. Because there's so much in technology now, you could connect with writers via Facebook. You can connect with writers, you know, in different chat areas or whatever, in different groups that you can find online. Um, and that's kind of how I found one of my co-writers, which then let, left me or led me to led me to another co-writer who I write with, who led me to another co-writer who I write with now. So I would say you just have to kind of go after it. I mean, but if I personally could move there, I would do it maybe for a short time. I don't necessarily want to live there. Um, I like the city. I enjoy visiting the city, you know, but as far as living there, it's probably not my preferred. But I've been able to write with some, you know, pretty substantial um, and meet some pretty substantial, you know, writers that I've been able to connect with. So I've been very blessed in that. And it all started with, you know, just searching out a group or talking in a, in a, you know, Facebook group with people and saying, Hey, I'm interested in this and having somebody else wanting to connect with me. Um, the first one was Melissa Lee, who she was a co-writer on back when. So the song that was, uh, that you just heard uh, her. And then she introduced me to Dave Linehan who also was co-writer on this song because I had this idea. I had half of the song written and I couldn't finish it. And both of them, along with Cliff Prowse, who's also based here in Arkansas, we finished the song. And they also are co-writers on uh, Give It a Damn, Don't Go With My Outfit, which was my song in May. So I've been able to do it here. Now, could I do more if I was there? I would say absolutely, because I would be immersed in it. I think that's my kind of my advice. (laughs) I I don't know if that's kind of both ways. Pamela, I had three friends that uh, moved to Nashville, okay, to pursue a career as a country music artist, and I did not hear, they all left, okay, I I heard that there are definitely some rules that you need to abide by to be accepted in the music community in Nashville. Now, I don't know if that's like a click or something, I have no idea not being in the music business, but they said that they're very, very particular about who they work with or who they allow to participate in. Uh, I guess they do these things where like the blue note, you go there and you sign up and you could do a jam or whatever that is where you get up and perform. And I heard it's very, very clicky. So I don't know about that, but my question. It probably is, you know, and I would say that it's also, you know, it's very saturated with people trying to do the same thing you're doing. That could be good. It could be bad, probably be depending on who you're making connections with, you know. Um, like I said, I've been very fortunate to find a few people that have introduced me to other people, you know, that are well known, who have written, you know, like um, there's one writer that I'm writing with now, his name is Billy Lee, and he had a, a song on the chart like 10 years ago um, called One, I think. I'm trying to, and off the top of my head, only because I'm trying to remember it, it's not coming to my brain. But we're halfway through a song we're writing, and then I've written with Scott Barrier, who's also written with some pretty important people. And, you know, it's it's finding those connections, and I'm not there. And then I'm, you know, so I, I think it can go both ways, depending on, like you said, you get in with the right people, but then yeah. what if you don't? Yeah. You know, what so- if you ruin it? <laughs> Right. So just know if anybody's thinking about doing that, I really think you need to 
know that it could possibly be clicky, but you really got to be a person, I think, that has the ability to be flexible and has a really outgoing personality. If you're right. more of a, you know, an introvert, maybe moving to Nashville is not the right place for you because there are a very friendly bunch of people I hear, but, you know, you have to be a certain caliber. They don't just take any Tom, right. Joe, Larry, whatever that is. So real quick, <laughs> what are some do's and don'ts when pursuing a career as a country music artist? I would say, um, like I said, do connect yourself with other people that are like-minded, um, that are also, you know, I would say motivated because you don't want people that say they are and then don't do anything. You have to have people that are, that are good with follow through. So if you're going to connect yourself with somebody who is a writer Make sure they're writing. You know, keep keep your appointments. Like I've fallen off writing the last couple of months just because I've been really, really busy, but we're getting back into it starting here. I think it's next week. I've got an appointment again. But getting with those people who do that, you know, because a lot of times musicians will say, oh, I want to do this, or I want to be a country music singer, or I want to do that. But what they do is their follow through is not there. Mm-hmm. And if you connect yourself with somebody who doesn't have follow through, but you do, you just start being frustrated. And it's like that you hit, you fill these dead end blocks. And so you want to be sure that you're, you know, you're following people and trying to connect yourself with people that are going to help you go forward. I think that's very important. And, um, you know, like you said, being flexible about that, being kind, being very um, appreciative because the people that I'm connecting with in Nashville that are, you know, writers there and they're writing with several artists, independent artists, or they're, you know, pitching songs to labels or, you know, publishing houses or to the big artists, you know, their mind is in the right spot and they're doing it. So you want to be with people who are doing it, not people who talk about it. Oh, no, I just, oh, they're called blow bags. I know I've run into those every day. So let's talk about this country music and your opinion in the approach of writing music or specifically country music lyrics, is it drastically different than writing lyrics for other music genres, would you say? See, I, I think it is because country is more of a story. You know, when you hear country music, a lot of times, um, not all of it, but a lot of it, is, or at least for me, it's going to be story based. When I go into writing something, it is a particular story in my head that I've got playing out and it's putting it into a lyrical form. Whereas, you know, I, I don't think that's why I can't, you know, when I listen to pop or I listen to R&B, a lot of times it's, it takes on a different, a different mm. lyrical, you know, mm. storyline. It's not a story. <laughs> right. It's more like, you know, and there are some country songs where like, Hey, let's just drink beer and have a good time. Well, right. wonderful. Um, but a lot, a lot of it is still kind of story based, you know, yeah. for me, particularly like me thinking about back when, it was, where am I going with this? What is what's leading to my course? And it was, well, you know, I'm, I had these nostalgic feelings that when I look back as an adult, um, going, man, that time just flew by. And I'm looking at my kids now and them not having the same privileges that we had, you know, because of the way the world is today. You know, the technology is just, I think, almost ruined them for their creativity because everything is given to them on a silver platter. Oh, no. We didn't have that. I know. So I would say that Pamela is saying if you want to think about writing music, country music, come out with a story and then just take the story and then make sure it rhymes, I think. Right. (laughs) I think it is. Some novel songs, you ever hear those songs that don't rhyme? Oh my God, I hate that so much. I hate those songs. (laughs) I want my song to rhyme. But Right. um, Well, even like, you know, Little Rock Famous, one of my songs that I had, it was, it's about my life, about my music career. Um, giving a damn don't go with my outfit is about looking around things that go on in small towns, you know, so little things, it's, you know, it's about tell the story of a couple and what keeps them together through all the years. You know, yeah, I want to hear a story. I want it to be like a little mini movie, a beginning, a middle and an end. So that's what I do appreciate about country music. But, you know, I love Reba with fancy. Oh, there you that's go. That's a, and I love the Carrie Underwood song when she took the Louisville slugger. Now slugger? that's a story, right? So story. make it a story. Uh, what's coming up? We, we got to end the show, but what's coming up for you? What's exciting that's happening that we can go to your website? Well, so um, I'm coming out with a new song. I'm hoping that it releases probably mid-November. 
um, is beginning to mid-November. We're, we're working on the background vocals now, and this is where we're talking about duets. This particular song is either going to be a duet or it's just going to have a strong male background vocal to it. Um, um, in the talks, I actually asked Matt Dame to do the background vocals, and he's like, I just can't because he is not touring with the Steel Drivers. He's touring with the Steel Drivers, which if you don't know who they are, they're like the biggest bluegrass country band in, in the whole world. They have over a million followers, and anyway – that's who he's lead singing for now. So he's like, I'm not going to be, you know, back where I'm going to be able to help you until like January. Well, I can't wait that long. So I'm having to find another uh, singer, which I just asked Ryan Harmon. If you don't know who he was, he was, um, I don't know what season it was, but recently in the last year or two, he was on American Idol. So he's here in Arkansas and he just did a demo for me of a song I wrote called I Love You Most. And I was like, hey, would you be interested in doing some background vocals for me on my next song, which is called One More Last Kiss, also a story-based song. Um, but that is my next release. It's called One More Last Kiss, and I'm really excited about it. It's about a love affair. So I love love affairs. Woo! Well, that I'm going to buy that for my birthday. My birthday's November 12th. I'm going to buy it on iTunes and treat myself. <laughs> So, uh, well, let me know, shoot me a text or something or a message and let me know so that I can uh, do a blast about it. So people know when. Absolutely. It's I appreciate it. So everybody go to PamelaHopkinsMusic.com and give her a little following finger on Facebook at Pamela Hopkins Music, Twitter, P Hopkins Music, Instagram, Pamela Hopkins Music and go oh, now you have to go to YouTube because you got to watch her in these videos. She is, there's nothing like seeing Pamela in these videos. She is so sultry and sexy. And I tell you, the men are just going to love you when they watch these videos. <laughs> so, and some women too, Pamela. All right. Well, thank you so much, sweetheart, for being on the show. You come back anytime you want and promote, and we're going to talk. I'll tell you about my adventures, my friend. Michael Orlin was the musical uh, director on American Idol, so we can swap some stories about American Idol that yeah. you would love before the show, of course. Yes, of course. Thank uh, you, absolutely. Pamela. Thank you Thank so, you so much. much. Say goodbye to your fans. Bye, everybody. You guys have a great night. Bye. <laughs> You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on L.A. Talk Radio.